Masks in Shader Graph coming up. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, this is Omar Bofiki. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, welcome to this channel where I create game development tutorials and from time to time I upload my short films. If you're interested, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. And just a reminder, my Unity Filmmaking 101 course is only a few days away from its release. You can pre-order it to get 50% off of its original price. The course will take you through the basics of timeline, cinemachine, and installing the Village URP demo, then creating a showcase video, and then creating a short film with it. And you will have access to two original soundtracks, one for the showcase and one for the short film. If you'd like to hear more about the course or get updates whenever it's released and also get exclusive discounts, subscribe to the newsletter and also the link to the course itself is in the description below and back to the tutorial. Today we'll take a look at LERP to create a mask using the shader graph and we'll create three different shaders that uses the LERP and masking a little bit differently. As you can see here, these are the three final results and let's start creating them one by one. The first thing we'll create is having multi layers. So you will have one shader that accepts two textures and switches between them using a mask. To create that, let's create a new shader graph and call this layered shader. And right click, create material and call it sphere masked layers. And let's select the first sphere here and assign the material to it and double click to open the shader graph. So the first thing we want to do is to test the LERP functionality. So right click create node and then add LERP and then we can just connect it to the base color. If I save it, it's black. LERP actually takes two values A and B and then switches between them using the time or the team parameter, which is a normalized value from zero to one. Zero would mean it will, it will use the, whatever input is in the A parameter. If it's one, it will use B. So if I type one here, save it, it will give us the white color. If I put 0.5, it will be something grayish in the middle. 0.2, something a little darker and closer to the A parameter and so on. Let's say we have two colors. So I'm gonna create a color node here, copy this and paste it and just push it aside. Let's say the first color is something white and the second one pure red, something like that. And then connect the first one here and then the second one here and let's create a float to control the time. And I'm just going to plug it in here, hit save. Now it will be turned white. If I change it from here to one, it'll be red and half will be the middle between both of them, something like this pinkish. So basically zero means black and one means white and white or one means B and zero or black means A. So, which means if we use this texture, a Vernoy noise texture, just plug it here in the time, look what happens. The black spots would be the first input, which is the white color. And then the white in here would be translated as one, which is closer to the red or the second input. Which means we can have one texture here, another texture here, and then a black and white texture that would be translated as the mask for this input. So let's do that now. Let's create three textures. First one will be layer one, duplicate that, and then layer two, and then mask layer. And I'm just gonna select all of them, drag them in here, and I'm gonna delete all of these, and let's place them in here. First, we need to connect them to sample texture node. So sample texture node and plug this in here. And then let's 
Repeat these steps. And plug this guy in here. And then we'll hit save. So if you take a look at it, there's nothing much, but if you select the sphere, you will see the material has three texture inputs now. So I'm just gonna lock it in here. So whenever I select any other folder, it's still here. I will go to textures. Where is it? Yeah, it's here. So the first layer, let's assign it with this rock texture. And then the second texture, or the second layer would be the grass texture. So as you can see, it has chosen this one because we haven't assigned the mask layer yet. But if we assign it now, you will see now it has these stripes of different textures. This is the this is the mask texture we have, which is assigning or switching between the two layers using the black and white. And if we had something grayish, it would be a mixture of both of them. But now, just like sharp edges changing from one to another. Another fun thing we can do is assign a tiling UV here and we can adjust the offset. So playing with the offset would mean it will animate this. So let's connect it to a vector 2. And then for the Y axis, we'll connect it to a time node. Hit save and look. We don't see it because it's too fast. Let's enable the always refresh and you will see how fast it is. We can create a float here and call it slide speed. And let's make it something like two. And then we're gonna divide this by a hundred and then multiply it with this new value and drag it in here sorry just drag it in here hit save and look what we have now it's pretty neat so this is the first example or the first way you could use it and of course you can create a color parameter and multiply them by each of these layers and you can have access even to the colors itself. So now if I go back, you will see here we have color one. I can modify the texture color. I can make it even green or yellow-ish. And then the other one we could play with it. And that's basically playing around with the mask to create two layers. Now that we created the first shader, which utilizes the multiple or two layers um, or two textures. Now let's see how to replicate that with emission and then the alpha cutout. So since most of them, they're quite similar, I'm just going to duplicate the shader we just created and I'm going to name it emission mask shader and right click create material and I'm going to assign it to this one over here. And let's open the emission mask and see what we have. So this time we're not using layers at all. So I'm just going to delete these two. And we're going to delete the multiply and just assign the colors directly. And instead of assigning them to the base color, let's assign them to the emission. I'm going to remove the layers that we don't use. And the colors, I'm going to change them from default to HDR. And the same thing for the other one. Let's hit save and see what do we have. I'm going to unlock the inspector here and modify them. So one would be bluish with a bit of intensity. And the other one would be white with little intensity. And let's assign the mask. And look at the magic. We can even increase this. And the other one, we can make it black with no intensity at all. And look what we have. We can even increase the speed. And now let's create the third one, which is the alpha. So I'm going to go back to the mission and I'm going to duplicate that and call this alpha mask shader right click create material 
and let's assign it to the third sphere. Let's double click. First thing we're going to do is changing the surface options, surface type from opaque to transparent. And then we're going to plug this into alpha. And we don't need the colors. And the color, let's give it a white color. Although it's a black and white texture, I can just plug it in here and it should work. But using a LARP gives us the ability to assign two values between A and B. So it's not either white or black or zero or one. You can even let it start from something like 50% alpha to one. So instead of being completely transparent, it could be like 50% transparent. But for now, we'll just use the default values between zero and one. But you can always go back to these two values and play with them to remap the black and white values that you've assigned in here. Let's save and let's see what we have. Okay, well, somehow the surface type here is still opaque, so I'm just going to change it back to transparent. And look what do we have. If I move it around, you'll see that it's actually transparent. And you can see through it. So now you can see that it's actually transparent. And you can just play around with the mask, different textures, and just see for yourself a lot of different results. And this is just the beginning, a simple way to show you how to use LURP to create a mask, to interpolate between two values, and then you can do your own magic with it. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Again, if you'd like to hear more about my Unity Filmmaking 101 course, please subscribe to the newsletter or visit the course page, and the links are in the description. This is Omar Bofaki. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.